Hey, Trail Kreitzer at Go Hunt. Uh, I'm down here in the Vegas office today and I got my good friend Dirk Durham, who was nice enough to fly in and do some content with us today. Oh, hey there. Hey there. <laughs> Man, myth, legend. <laughs> um, so we wanted to run through and do a video on how to select the right elk call for you. We get tons of questions, I'm sure you guys do as well, yep. about you know what call to pick. Um, First and foremost, I think what we want to touch on is the different types of elk calls that you guys make. So we've got some calls laid out in front of us. Just give me a quick, you know, 30 second tutorial on the different types of calls, what they're called. Okay, we've got a pretty big gamut of, of different diaphragms in our AMP series of our diaphragms. We started our orange AMP, which is our lightest latex, and we end at the purple AMP, which is the Smith Signature call, which is a really thick latex. Thick latex equals heavier pressure, Light, thin light latex equals lighter pressure, so. And that's, you're talking about what we would traditionally call a diaphragm call, right? Diaphragm call. Some folks call them reeds, uh, some folks call them diaphragms, um, but yeah, that's basically what we're talking about. So it's those calls that you put in your mouth, the one yep. with the dome on the top, you put them in, blow some air through them, and, and that's what you would call a traditional diaphragm call, right? Yep. Okay, what's this call that you've got here sitting on the table? Now this is an open reed or an external reed cow call, right? We can just put this in here, put your lips on it. <coughs> Pretty simple operation. A little bit shorter uh, learning curve definitely than a diaphragm. All right, so you got a couple of bugle tubes here. Uh, this is your, your middle bugle tube. Yep. And then what other types of bugle tubes did you guys make at Phelps? We make uh, three other tubes basically we have our Unleashed series. That's a full length, full size tube. You guys sell them on the website. Yep. They're the, like the big honker mamba jamba of bugle tubes. Full sound, lots of bass, um, excellent authentic sounds. Then we also sell the Renegade. The Renegade is a shortened version of the Unleashed tube. It's personally my favorite. It's a, just a little bit shorter, a little smaller mouthpiece, and it fits in your pack just a little better. Right in the middle of that lineup, we have the middle tube, the metal tube, and then Last but not least is our really small, it's called the Unrivaled. You guys mm. probably sell those on the yep. website as well. And the Unrivaled is for those guys like Brady Miller who cut their toothbrush in half. <laughs> and you know, ounces make pounds, pounds make pain. Th those, those are the guys that use the Unrivaled because it's so small and compact. It's like 4.9 ounces uh, and very small in stature, but it has a lot of sound in it too. If we could only get Brady to hunt, help. The, the fair species. The fair species. That's, uh, that's what I think. He would call them mountain carp, but you know. <laughs> well, someday he'll become a man. Yeah. You know? So talk to me. We've got a couple of mouthpieces or, or components, right, that are that you yeah. can put on these these bugles. So on the metal bugle tube, you can order it a couple different ways. You can order it for traditional diaphragm use with the flared mouthpiece, or let's say you're new at calling, or maybe you just you can't get to to diaphragms to work. You know, maybe you have a really narrow palate, maybe you, you're using dentures, maybe you're, you have some kind of impediment where you cannot use a normal diaphragm. We've got you, we've got the easy bugler mouthpiece. That's where the diaphragm guts are inserted into this little mouthpiece at a certain angle. And we've engineered a whole bunch of back pressure and a lot of really critical little details in this mouthpiece to where it just makes this call sing. So you can and, buy this call with that piece, or you can buy it with just the standard wide mouth at the top yes. that you can use in conjunction with a, a, a diaphragm call, right? Yep, and you can add it on as an accessory. So you're like, eh, I kind of want to do best of both worlds. Right. Because how many times one day you chase a bull and you've pretty much exhausted him with your normal sounds of calling, you go at him, back at him on day two with a different call, mm -hmm. you sound quite a bit different, it's game on again. So um, these things are interchangeable. You can add these on as an accessory, and it's a game changer. All right. So I want to dive into actually how to select a call. Um, so let's say somebody calls you up, they're brand new, they've never used a diaphragm call. Um, what advice do you give them on selecting a call? I mean, like, what's the, the first steps? Do you have them like, you know, think about the shape of their mouth? Um, I mean, what, what factors go into selecting a call for a beginner? So selecting a call for a beginner can be pretty intimidating because there's yeah. so many calls, you know, within our lineup and within all manufacturers lineups, you know, there's kind of like a call for everybody, yeah. right? And um, a lot of new callers, they don't know, you know, the shape of their mouth and stuff. Um, and we haven't really, and we should do that. We should uh, kind of quantify like a, a measurement, like, okay, if this 
measurement is X inside of your palette, then maybe you should use this call, this, sure. this little small call, or maybe you fall into the like normal size palette category. But uh, most of the time we kind of like to recommend at least two or three different latex combinations um, to get you going. Because you just never know. Just because you're a new caller, you, a lot of folks think, oh, I should get like the, the easiest call there is to the, blow. The lightest latex. Right. right? But a lot of times, um, new callers, they have no point of reference on how hard they should blow. Mm -hmm. Some guy may be trying to blow this thing up like they're trying to air up an air mattress, right? Right. Where the next guy, maybe he's kind of a soft talker normal and he don't use a lot of air pressure and he needs that light latex. So I like to tell people to get a light, a medium, and a heavy latex. So a light one would be our uh, black one because it does bugles, great cow calls, mm -hmm. and everything. That's the black amp. Um, the medium latex, old Steady Eddie, this has been a strong seller for us for years. The gray amp, it's kind of got a medium latex, medium stretch. It doesn't take a lot of air to make it go, but you can put a little more air to it mm -hmm. and make lots of robust bugles and really nice cow calls. And then the third one I recommend, and I'm a little biased on this because uh, it's the Maverick, it's my call, it's my signature call. But I do really think it's great because it's got a lot, it's got a really heavy latex, a tight stretch. And for some of those callers that maybe they don't know that they're overblowing their calls, mm -hmm. this is gonna, gonna soak up all that extra air pressure. Or maybe you're a really advanced caller and you need to, to blow really hard, hard on your call, you're gonna love a Maverick. So those are the ones I recommend. Um, you know, and we have other diaphragms within in between those with different latexes, different colors of latexes, and there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes up in, into uh, the design of, on why a call uh, mm -hmm. sounds the way it does. So, so when uh, you, you make different latexes, different thicknesses for different sounds, right? So each one's mm -hmm. going to give kind of a different tone. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like one of the best methods is to buy and try some, right? To, right? to what works for you. So maybe some, you know, light latex, some medium stuff, and then some heavier stuff to, to see what works for you and, and the amount of pressure that you're putting behind it. Absolutely. Yeah, if you're spending 50, 60 bucks on diaphragms, uh, right out of the gate just to kind of figure it out. That's, that's yeah. you know, it's money well spent because what I find is new folks, they'll, they'll, they'll buy three or four different diaphragms, they'll start practicing, and they're like, oh, I really, I really like this gray one. It's working for me. And so they'll practice and they'll start beginning, you know, all their practice routines. And after a couple weeks or maybe a month, they're like, okay, I think I got that figured out. Then they go grab one of their other diaphragms they bought and try it and they're like, ooh, Man, I really like this one now. I like it way better than that other one. Huh, that's weird. Well, what's happened is you've developed control, you've learned how to use the diaphragm better, and now you've kind of put yourself into a different spot mm -hmm. uh, where you, you can use those diaphragms better. So the thicker the latex, I mean, talk to me about sounds that you get. So a heavier latex, I mean, does that impact the sound? Do you get a more mature sound? Yeah, so heavier latex, it gives you a more rich mm -hmm. and a little more robust type sound, and it'll withstand a lot more air pressure, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you're wanting like a more mature type sound, um, definitely a heavier latex will work for that. Um, our purple one, that's probably our least, least, uh, our, probably our slowest mover. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the most undersold hero of our lineup because man, if you want to make some really great mature cow calls, that, that really heavy latex in that purple call, it's money. It sounds really, really good. And you can do some big rip, rip and bugles yeah. with it too. You've got one here on the end. I see that's definitely smaller than the other ones. Yeah, that was new. Uh, that's new in our lineup. It's the mini amp. Mm -hmm. um, this thing is tiny. And that's for those folks who have that narrow palate, you know, that still want to do a diaphragm. Maybe they don't want to just only be limited to like a, an easy bugler and, a, and an external reed, uh, open reed cow call. That they want to make sure they use a diaphragm and that's going to be really great for those guys that have uh, a really narrow palate mm -hmm. and ladies and kids too because ladies and kids a lot of times will have that smaller narrower palate and uh, you know the, the trick forever for those folks has been you know you cut down the tape a little bit you take a little bit off on this side a little bit off on this side like a, mm -hmm. a sixteenth of an inch try it sixteenth of an inch try it until you find it to where it kind of fits but some folks are just their their palate so darn narrow they need that smaller framed 
framed call. It's got, it's got it's got smaller tape and a smaller frame. Do you guys have dirt like a chart, directions, anything like that on your website that kind of you know depicts what each individual call is, kind of its strength uh, for each call, and why someone might want that call versus another one? Yeah, yeah, we uh, have what we call the call matrix. Okay, right, and Sweet game. It, and it, yeah. It's, <laughs> It's basically the matrix. Red, pill or blue? <laughs> <laughs> Green. <Yeah. laughs> so it basically spells out kind of like what we talked about, like our lightest latex calls on up to our heavy calls and kind of where each call fits into that lineup. Um, and then how much air pressure is going to take to make those calls work. And it, it does help uh, folks kind of pick them out a little bit, especially if you've been calling for a little bit and you kind of know a little bit about yourself. And you're like, yeah. Call pretty hard or nah, I'm kind of in the middle and you can look at that chart and see where you need to be. I think you make a good point about not being, you know, initially uh, intimidated by some of the calls. So like the Maverick, which is your call, you, I've heard people say, I've heard you say that like if you're more of an advanced caller, I'm not more of an advanced caller, but that is the call for me that right out of the package even is a, you know, somewhat of a novice still, mm -hmm. I would say worked for me like right. it just there's something about the latex in that call that just sounds better for me so yep. you know don't be afraid to you know pick up one that even though it might be labeled more of an advanced type of call right right because right. it may work for you right it's it's really hard to assume when we're talking elk calls and what's the right call for you sure. you know you, your buddy he might say man you need a green one all day long and i love it but your buddy just probably blows different than you do because you like that Maverick or whatever, you know? And when I designed that Maverick, I kind of thought, you know, this is probably going to be only for advanced callers. You know, the mm -hmm. newbies are probably not going to really like it, but a lot of new folks, they'll they'll pick up three or four of these things and they always kind of gravitate a lot of times to that Maverick just because, I don't know, there's something about it. I don't know if it's they hear heavy you blow late it. They hear me do <laughs> blow it, right? I like the I one that sounds like that. that. Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's that heavy latex with that stretch and it just it sounds good it's got a rich tone so all right so talk to me a little bit about the external read you've got a you know you don't have to use a diaphragm call uh, i myself i i really like these because they're easy to blow um yeah. this is a what mini esters this is the mini x um mini x mini x and the double d the dirk durham signature series uh, it's red and gray we make this in also one that's kind of like a brown and and uh, tan or something color, and you know, they call it natural. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're really small, really compact. And what I love about this, it has this really small tone board. The tone board is where you put your lips, okay? The smaller it is, it seems like it's a lot easier to control. Um, you don't have to like, it's not like having a whole mouthful of stuff. You can just put it in there. I feel like I have a lot more control, a lot more say-so on the sounds that are coming out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you might say, why the heck? Why the heck do you want to use one of these, darn? I thought you said these are good. Yeah. They're really great. These are the diaphragms are hands-free. You can make all the, the sounds and be very versatile. But I like we've talked before, there's times where I've introduced introduced this into the conversation with bulls, and for whatever reason, they love it. It's like, oh man, that's old Mary Lou from last year. <laughs> We made some pretty, some pretty love. spectacular, <laughs> pretty spectacular calf elk. So um, they just they just they just pick up the conversation. They really uh, start bugling a lot more, and they come in. Um, I'd like to say it's like fifty percent of the time, but not really. Sometimes it's less than that. But um, I, I always I always use it um, as an experiment. I'm always every bull. It's an experiment. I'm, throwing different calls to him and seeing what he likes and whatever he's biting on, I continue with that. So, trial and error. Yep, trial and error. So it's not like we have a magic bullet ever. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I, I wanna have a whole quiver of elk calling magic bullets to where on whatever day, one of those things is gonna work. So one day it might be a diaphragm, the next day it might be this thing, but I don't wanna miss out because I didn't carry one. You carry both, you use both. Yep. Diaphragm and an external reed and a bugle. Yep. Right. And a lot of times, you know, guys uh, like me, I only carry one type of diaphragm with me. I just carry this. But a lot of guys will carry two or three, four different kinds of kinds of diaphragms in their call pouch, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and why do they do that? Well, you know, for for their calling level or, or, or whatever, they like the, the different little nuanced 
sounds and tones out of the different diaphragms, out of those different thicknesses of latex. Maybe they want that really light, squeaky type call. You know, maybe they're trying to make little calf calls, real subtle calf calls. Maybe they want to make a make a real wimpy, immature raghorn type bugle. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a call for that. Maybe they want to just make beautiful cow calls, and they they've got a call for that. So. Um, it's okay to have, you know, a whole pou call pouch full of different calls. Um, it's kind of like having a whole fishing box full of built sure, different lures. fishing lures. So, yeah. um, you know, it just ups your game. Right. So just to close it out, I would say kind of what I'm hearing, check the, uh, the matrix, the Phelps matrix, your game calls, just to see what's available. You guys have got some ideas on what might work for different people within that matrix, I yep. assume. Uh, next thing I'm hearing is, you know, don't be afraid to buy and try a bunch. Right. Um, sticker price, 60 bucks, you say. How many calls you get for 60 bucks? Maybe uh, they're about 10 bucks a 10 piece bucks on a piece. average. So. Okay, so you're going to get, you know, what, six calls? Yeah. Yeah, I'm terrible at math, right? That's what, I, <laughs> that's what they always say, four out of three people, right? Terrible right. at math. Um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so I would say buy and try. Don't be afraid to buy several and try them. Uh, it may take some trial and error to find the one that works for you. I think I think that's a, probably one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make, me included. I'll buy like one here and there, I'll mm -hmm. try it. Yeah, it doesn't work for me, and I'm not good at elk calling. Maybe I just haven't found the right call that works for me, the right uh, diaphragm. Absolutely, I think that happens a lot. Like 80% yeah. of the time, the guys are like wandering through Walmart. Oh, there's an elk call, I'll try that one. They grab it and they're like, oh God, I suck. Yeah. And then they didn't know there was this whole other world of like options. options. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. And then always, you know, external read calls. I think everybody should have one of those. I mean, that's foolproof for me. Get one of each, get proficient, have multiple, you know, quiver or arrows in your quiver, you know, be diversified in your calls, have, you know, the bugle, the externals, the reads, um, you know, the diaphragms and, and buy and try them. So all these available in the Go Hunt gear shop. We have a full lineup of Phelps calls, including the bugle tubes, the uh, diaphragm calls, uh, the external reed calls. Uh, now's the time. I would say right now, May. I mean, all your draw results are coming out. Now's the time to spend 15, 20 minutes a day becoming more proficient with your elk calls. And now's the time to practice. All those are available right now in the Go Hunt gear shop. <laughs>